Hey everybody, this is Andy Brown with Linear Liquid and today I'm going to show you my HDR workflow using Aperture and Nick Software's HDR Effects Pro. Now I know that HDR imagery is kind of a, you like it or you don't like it, you know, it's kind of a polarizing uh, type of art. Some people say it's just there to kind of enhance the dynamic range and other people really like the look, the overprocessed look of HDR imagery. And that's where I fall. I think it's just amazing what you can do by taking a series of exposures and then tweaking them in software. And I think that adds to the appeal and you know makes photography the art form that it is. And so I was really excited when they announced uh, that they were going to be producing a HDR plugin. Uh, I'm a big fan of Nick's software, as some of you might know with my other videos. And so I've been playing around with this since it was released, uh, let's see, probably a couple months ago. And so I just wanted to show you how I do my HDR processing. And I start off in Aperture. Uh, if you've watched some of my other videos, you might notice that before I was using Lightroom, but I started off my photography in Aperture and only switched to Lightroom because Apple didn't support my D300S when it came out, and so I was kind of mad and decided to give my money to Adobe. But I do like the way the Aperture processes my RAW photos better than Adobe Camera Raw does. So... I'm back in Aperture and I like the workflow of Aperture a little bit better. The only thing I do like about Lightroom over Aperture is the darker interface. So if there is a way to make this darker that I just haven't found, that would be wonderful. And if not, Apple, please make them make there an option to make it darker. So let's jump into it now. As you can see, I've got my uh, seven different exposures here. And the reason why I did 7 is because it works well for me. I know you can do as few as 3 uh, for a good HDR image, and uh, some people even do it with 1. Uh, but 7 works well for me, and what I do is I just set my camera to uh, bracketing. And the thing about HDR is you want to make sure that your shutter speed changes and not your aperture. So if you look at my uh, metadata... This first one, the way I've got it set up, is it does the camera's optimal image first. So you can see that we have, you know, ISO 200, it's a 17 millimeter uh, lens, uh, 0, f5.6, 1 800th of a second. And then it goes down to negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 1, 2, and 3. So that is my range and notice that the shutter speed is what changes so 100 200 400 1600 3200 6400 and this is 800 so it's changing the shutter speed because you don't want your depth of field to change uh, when your aperture changes so make sure if you've got it on uh, auto bracket that it's your shutter that is changing and not your aperture so I've got my seven images here and so what I'm going to do is just right click go to edit with plugin and go down to HDR effects pro and what it's going to do is it's going to prepare my files uh, for editing then it's going to go in align them and combine them into one HDR image so I'll pause and let the computer do all of its calculations and I'll be back in just a second Okay, so here we are in HDR Effects Pro, and if you're familiar with any of the other Nick software plugins, you can see that this looks very, very familiar. You have your main image in the middle, presets along the left-hand side, uh, your adjustments along the right-hand side with the loop and histogram down at the bottom. So this has taken those seven files and made it into a 32-bit HDR image. And what I really like about this plugin is that I can play with the settings here to create my image, or I can choose one of the presets and then go on to tweak 
the settings to make my artistic vision come alive. So as you can see, there's quite a few of them. Uh, the one I generally start with, because I really like the look of it, is the Realistic Strong preset. So I'm just going to select that one, and you'll see the main image start to change. And there we go. So if I click on the preview button, there's the before and after. So you can see, you know, a lot in the clouds and, you know, the airplane has been brought out. Now, once I select my preset, I usually adjust the tone compression and I bring it up usually to about 75% or so. And then I just go from the top down for my global adjustments. The exposure is fine with me. I usually bring up the contrast a little bit. Uh, saturation, usually touch that up some, bring up the structure. Blacks, whites, warm, those all look good to me. Now what's really cool is this HDR method. And you can click on the drop down box and see that there are a lot of different HDR methods. Uh, this one defaults to the sharp method. One that I like to use a lot is dark textures and as you can see it really brings out a lot of the detail in the airplane so I'll I'll use that one just because I normally do and you can adjust the method strength here so if I bump it up all the way you can see that super HD R look and I'll just Leave it around 22%. And once again, we have our control points, so we can use those to adjust our image, you know, where we want the HDR effect to be more pronounced or less pronounced. Uh, but for right now, this is looking pretty good to me. So I'm going to save, and then we're going to go back into Aperture, and I'll show you some of the other tools that I use to finish out my image. So once again I'm going to pause as this saves and takes us back to Aperture. Alright so here we are back in Aperture and you can see that it's imported my file for me and everything. So I can use these adjustments that Aperture has or I can use some other adjustments which I typically do. The first thing I'm going to use is Viveza 2. So I'm going to right click, go to Edit with Plugin, and go down to Viveza 2. And when that loads, I'll bring you back. All right, normally I wouldn't pause in between steps, but since I'm using uh, a reduced size of my window to make this in full HD, I have to resize my screen. So uh, just bear with me, hopefully it's not too bothersome. But here we are in Viveza 2, and this is one of my favorite plugins because it allows me to tweak the different settings for the sky and the different colors and it makes it really easy. I don't have to mask off areas and do any of that junk in Photoshop. I can stay right here in Aperture where I do probably 95% of my work. It's made it really really nice so I don't have to jump back and forth to Photoshop. But I'll show you how I typically process my images. So I'll go up to Add Control Point and click on this blue for the sky and notice we have a little halo around here so I'll just decrease the brightness a little bit and adjust the contrast just to kinda tone that halo down uh, if I uncheck the box you can see how you know that halo is a little bit more under control now and I'll actually duplicate this control point by holding down the Alt key and dragging it over here. I'll reduce the size, reduce the brightness a little bit more just to get that blue really consistent in the sky. And I will duplicate it one more time, bring it over here, 
and adjust the size play with the brightness just a little bit and that really has the effect of you know setting off this edge right here with the sky so you can see the before and after so not a huge difference but it does you know kind of even out the sky for me and that's typically what I'll do with these HDRs just kind of go in and tweak the sky a little bit just to make it a nice even blue and another a little tweak that I do sometimes for my images that you don't have to is I'll go in and adjust these clouds a little bit so I'll place my control point and I'll usually brighten the clouds up a little bit yeah maybe adjust the contrast and then I'll slam the saturation all the way down uh, just to take any color cast out of the the clouds and like I said this is a personal uh, little tweak but I like it and so I'll just duplicate that bring it up to those clouds bring it over to these in the corner and then right down here to the bottom and I'll shrink that down so it just grabs those clouds and so you can see the before and after so not a not a huge change uh, but I like it so that's what I do and once again you have your global controls over here that you can adjust if you want or you can just leave them and let the control points dictate how you adjust your image so I'm pretty happy with this one so I'm going to go ahead and click save and it's going to process my image and throw me back into aperture so let's come on computer there we go and we are back now with our updated image all right now once I do my Viveza 2 editing sometimes I'll just output it from here but there's always one other change that I like to go through just to see how uh, it affects the image so I'm gonna right click go to edit with plugin and then color effects pro and once again I apologize about the little pause but I wanted to make sure that my screen takes up the entire real estate now color effects pro these are all my different filters that I have access to and the main ones that I use are the contrast filters so I'll go through contrast color range first see how that looks and once again I can tweak these to make them look like what I want uh, but that's not really doing it I don't like the the pink down here and I'll hit contrast only and that's not too bad and then I'll scroll down and hit pro contrast and that's looking pretty good before and after just brings it out a little bit and then finally tonal contrast which is probably my favorite filter out of all these it just adds a depth to the image that uh, really makes it stand out if you look down at the loop you can see the before is on the left hand side and the after is on the right hand side and you can see the way those rivets you know really stand out after you apply the filter so I'm going to hit save and we'll go back to aperture where we'll apply some noise reduction and finish out this image alright so here we are back in aperture now you can see that my image is really really noisy or grainy and this happens a lot you know when you do the HDR most of the time it doesn't bother me but when I do an HDR image and then add the uh, tonal contrast filter that really adds a lot of noise if I bring up the loop I mean you can see you know it's, it's got a nice pattern to it and when you print it it's not that noticeable but I want to take care of it nonetheless so I'm gonna use one more plugin and that is define 2.0 which is now in 64 bits as are all the other 
NIC software plugin, so the entire workflow is 64-bit. Before in Aperture, you'd have to close Aperture and reopen in 32-bit, and you know it was kind of a hassle, but not too bad. However, in Lightroom, everything is an external editor, so it didn't have to do anything. But now that it's 64-bit compatible, I just open it up, and I can reduce my noise. And here we are in Define, and it's going through and looking at these areas of noise here, here, and down here. And as you can see in the loop, it has reduced the noise quite a bit. But I'm going to go over to the automatic method, click manual, and I'm going to drag out a couple more boxes just to help it out a little. So I'll get my sky, I'll grab this piece of the plane, and I'll grab this piece down here. And I'll go back and measure the noise again. And that seemed to help a little bit. I'll go ahead and reduce and bring down or bring up the contrast noise and the color noise just in case there's some that I'm missing. And that really does a nice job. Uh, there's still a little bit of noise, but when I print it, I'm not going to be able to tell. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit save. And now it's going to process my image. And most of the time I will leave the noise reduction on the defaults because it does an excellent job and I don't have to mess with it much. But I just wanted to get, get it a little bit more under control than it was. Now finally for you perfectionists and pixel peepers out there, I'm sure you noticed this big nice dust spot. So I'm just going to take care of that real quick. And I'll go to adjustments, retouch just my radius and click and it's gone so that is my workflow for HDR imagery and I don't claim to be an expert on this but this is how I do it and you know it might not be the right way it might not even be the best way but it's my way and it lets me get my art the way I want it to and I hope that it's helped uh, answer some questions if you have any about the workflow and about this particular plugin. And once again, I get no money from Nick's software at all. I just really, really like their products. I've used them since last year when I started really uh, taking my photography hobby more seriously. And I think they do a fantastic job. And I really, really enjoy HDRFX Pro. So if you're interested in this, they've got a demo, go download it, go watch their videos. They have weekly videos that go a lot more in depth than I do. Uh, but I just wanted to kind of show you how I do my work. And you know, if anybody out there thinks like I do, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, but it's just a nice way to, you know, give back to, uh, some of the people that have helped me out there, I appreciate all those that do free tutorials. Uh, they've made my life easier in learning stuff. And uh, if I can help somebody else out, then uh, that is just wonderful. So, once again, my name is Andy Brown. Uh, my website is andybrown.me, M-E. And if there's anything I can do, uh, let me know. Uh, feel free to post some comments. I will check them regularly and post back. So have a good night and I'll see you next time.